I moved to Mexico, giving you a sneak peek into the lives of Americans and Canadians who live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Thank you for tuning in to I Moved to Mexico. I'm Diani Leal, and this series is brought to you by Diani Might Lifestyle and Real Estate based in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. We're here today with Chantel Mann, originally from Washington State in the United States, and she moved here to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico 20 years ago. Chantel, 20 years. Hi. welcome to our show. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. It's <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Yes. It's nice to meet you too. So um, I was in a WhatsApp group and here in Puerto Vallarta and somebody was talking about you and saying, hey, my friend is interviewing expats or foreigners living in Mexico. And so I said, well, I've been here for like a really long time. Um, so it'd be fun to talk to you. Yeah, I'm so oh, yeah. excited. I mean, 20 years, I can't imagine all you've seen and done and, and your experience in that, you know, in that time and yeah. all the changes that Puerto Vallarta has gone through. Oh my too. gosh, so many. So I'll just give you guys like a kind of a quick overview of why I moved here. And um, I came here in 1999 for the first time. Um, I vacationed with my family. And I love telling this story because it almost makes me cry every time and it gives me goosebumps and it's just, there's something magical about Puerto Vallarta. And if people have never been here, you won't understand it. And if you've been here, you'll completely understand it. Um, we arrived in the airplane and we did the big circle around and I still remember it and the airplane touched down and I just got this overwhelming feeling and I got tears in my eyes. And I remember my mom and dad looking at me on the airplane and saying like, what's wrong and I said I have no idea I just it everything felt so familiar and so we came out of the airplane and got in a taxi and this was when the Malecon was still open to traffic and I just still remember it was sunset time it was beautiful it was November 9th 1999 I guess the nines are in there somewhere for a lucky number <laughs> um, and we drove through the Malecon and it was just magical I can still see it and we stayed um, out on the south shore at Playas Gemelas which some of the most beautiful beaches in the bay and my dad and I walked down and um, we were having a beer on the beach and I looked at my dad and I said I was 19 years old and I said I'm going to live here someday oh my gosh I and, had no idea so it was like love at first sight yeah kind of. it was just a feeling I can't describe it and everything that happened in our week stay was serendipitous I met all of these people who are still in my life to this day um, and it Vallarta just at that point felt like home and when I left I cried so hard and I felt homesick and so fast forward I was in university studying and I had an opportunity to study in Guadalajara and so I didn't tell my family and I went and signed up for this opportunity and was accepted and was leaving in two months and I didn't know how to tell everyone I was picking my life up and moving to Mexico at 20 years old so you didn't tell anybody I didn't tell anybody I <laughs> broke it to them really slowly and then they were excited and so I moved and I ended up living in Guadalajara for almost a year I studied at La Autonoma de Guadalajara um, I studied Spanish purely Spanish and every chance I got I came out to Vallarta so I fostered friendships I just I, I loved it here and I just kind of knew in my heart this is where I was going to end up yeah um, so I moved back to the US and I finished my degree in marketing um, business management and then I had a minor in Spanish and so I decided that it was probably gonna be a good idea to further my Spanish and so I thought and all my friends in Vallarta were like hey come down for the season like you know, we'll find you a job somewhere. You know, when you're 21 years old, 22, you just go, oh, well, that's great. You I'll can, just, yeah, yeah, you have an opening and you build a community here already. Totally, yeah. yeah. So um, I moved with a friend uh, down here to stay for six months and that was 20 years ago. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. So you've been here your whole adult life. I have, I have, yeah. I've, I've lived here half of my entire life. <laughs> and was there anything in the States that you were just like, you know, what made you choose Mexico over the U.S.? Is it anything specific or just for the that really, had your heart? Yeah, not really anything specific. I just knew that I loved it here. I felt good when I was here. And there was something from that first time that I landed here that drew me here. And I knew this is where I needed to be. I just knew that this is where I... Well, I didn't know it at the time that I was going to build a 20 year career and future here, but it just, it felt right. So I went with my gut. Yeah. Right. So, which is what we need to do a lot of times. And we don't. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. 
So 20 years, you know, uh, what was Puerto Varta like when you first got here? And can you kind of describe what it's like now for people that maybe haven't been and aren't really that yeah. familiar with it? Um, it was a little Mexican beach town. Um, we used to, like if somebody was coming from Canada or the States, there was a lot of things that we couldn't get here before. So we'd be like, will you bring me this? Will you bring me that? It was so funny. It was like all, all of our friends, we'd bring stuff back for each other. Things that we missed from home. It could be something as simple as like Miracle Whip, which sounds so funny. I can't even tell you how many jars of Miracle Whip I mule back and forth for people. Um, but just like little things like that that we couldn't get. Um, you couldn't get a big clothing selection here. There was like one little plaza that still exists, Plaza Caracol, that had a few yeah. shops. But other than that, you would go home to do your shopping and then all of your friends would want you to bring clothes back. Wow. Or people would bring clothes. Yeah. So, but I mean, we have everything here now. So We do. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, Cause I lived in Nicaragua in a small town for a while and you that's know. what we did too. Yeah. yeah. We transported everything, uh -huh. you know. And, the uh, creature comforts. Yeah. And this is, it's less like a small town now and it's more like a city. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. And yeah. you used to be able to get from from like Centro downtown to Nuevo Vallarta, um, Bucerías, La Cruz, even out to Sayulita in like half an hour. Oh, wow. And now if you want to go to Sayulita, you need to block out like two hours yeah. from downtown. Does it's that sound? A, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. just because of traffic. Like it's traffic. growing. Yeah. yeah, it's growing. And the infrastructure is kind of growing to keep up with it, but almost not fast enough. You yeah. know, it's, it yeah. really is growing a lot. Definitely agree. I think there's people moving faster than the infrastructure can, can keep up with. Yeah. There's, it's hard to find a place to buy, hard to find a place to rent. I yeah, mean, you can find is. places, but they get snatched up really fast. Really fast. Yeah. That's true. And then the construction and development is, is, uh, is everywhere because, you know, the developers are just scrambling to keep up with the growing population. Yep. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. So what about, uh, you met your husband here? I did. When and how did you guys meet? And, and, and can you tell us about that? Yeah. So um, my husband is from Zacatecas which is a state um, north of uh, Jalisco, where Puerto Vallarta is. Um, my husband came here 17 years ago. Um, he's an architect, and he was working for Cruz Azul Cement Company in Guadalajara. And at that time, they were opening Fluvial, like where Costco and everything is. So he came out here to pour all the roads and the streets, um, got here, and decided also that he loved it. He has since told me many times a story about when he was little, came here the first time with his family to the Malecon, stood at the Malecon at sunset and said, I'm going to live there someday. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm like, we both had a sunset experience. <laughs> um, so yeah, so fast forward, uh, I have a good friend uh, who's a musician here, Checo Ruiz, hi Checo, <laughs> and um, his wife, Elena, um, his wife, Elena, and my husband had worked together. She's an engineer. And... She called me one day and said, I have this guy that I really want you to meet. And I said, okay. I said, is he Mexican? And she said, yeah. And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> so that became our joke. Um, fast forward, we finally, after six months of her trying to set us up, we were at the same place at the same time, met kind of on a blind date. Um, I wasn't real impressed by him at the beginning and then we went out to have a bite to eat afterwards and I saw how kind he was to the wait staff and what good manners he had and I thought this is somebody that I want to get to know because I'm sure he comes from a nice educated family and sure enough he did and that was that. Wow. We dated for two years, got engaged, oh, and then got married six months after we got engaged, and we'll celebrate six years this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Six years. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, and what was your initial hesitation with dating somebody from Mexico? <laughs> I had just dated a lot of people from Mexico. Um, it's a different culture. Uh, it's just sometimes a different expectation uh, between, you know, women's roles and men's roles. I'm very independent. Um, I don't need anyone to take care of me. Do I love having my husband take care of me? Yes. Do I need it? No. Um, so I was a little bit hesitant to just, you know, meet someone that, you know, I'm thinking that was going to be like this machismo role, which that's still a thing here. <laughs> it is. It and is. American women are used to that. No, definitely yeah. not. So, yeah. So it's an adjustment being married to someone from a different religion, a different culture, you know, different yeah. than everything that you were raised in. You have to compromise. Absolutely. On a lot of things. And also my husband does not speak English. 
Um, so we are a bilingual household. And so I speak to him in Spanish and then of course English is my native language. So, yeah. yeah. So speaking of your household, mm -hmm. you know, I know that both of us went through a similar experience. Our kids are exactly the same age. Oh our gosh, daughters yeah. were three, having a baby during the pandemic, all of these things changed, uh, you know, what um so you guys have a daughter now we how do. do you feel about you know uh, marrying somebody from mexico having your daughter raising your child here in mexico you know it's one thing when you take off in your 20s and you're like this yeah, is fun for sure it's another when you you're choosing to settle down and, and start a family and yeah how's that experience been for you and how do you feel about it we um we actually had an opportunity to move back to the u.s or to move to the u.s um and we discussed it at length and my husband just really wasn't keen on it I really wasn't either. Yeah, I get homesick. I get to go visit my family. I have a nice visit, but I do truly feel like this is home. Yeah. And we both feel in our hearts that this is the best place to raise our daughter. Um, the lifestyle here is an outdoor lifestyle. It's an active lifestyle. I feel that we're healthier here. I feel that we have access to healthier foods. So just, just, I just feel like it's where we're supposed to be. Yeah, like more in touch with community and uh -huh. nature. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, literally, I, I still, after 20 years, I love the fact that like I can get home from work, change my clothes, throw stuff in the car, in five minutes we're at the beach yeah. and we can watch the sunset. And people work a year or two years or three years or five years to save enough money to bring their family on vacation. Yeah. And I can go do that any day I want to. And I never take that for granted. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's funny, my son, he's, he says the beach is dirty. He doesn't want to go to the beach. And I'm like, it can't, <laughs> people travel so far to, to, to come and, and be able to appreciate this. But, you know, he doesn't have the same perspective as somebody like you or I, because the, that's not where we, we didn't grow up like that. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's interesting because, you know, uh, they, they think this is normal. Yeah. And you're like, no, this is a really amazing privilege that we can go and just, you know, walk to the beach. And honestly, yeah, but no matter where you live, it's always going to be five, 10 minutes away. Yeah. If you're, you live in the Vallarta or the Bay. Uh-huh, exactly, know? yeah. So speaking of, you know, Vallarta and the Bay, mm -hmm. I know that you're living right now uh, farther north, you're in, uh, but you have, you work here in Romantic Zone. Me too, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, what, I know you guys have a dream for, you know, setting up a life, uh, you know, is it building, buying land, building a house? Can you tell us a little bit about that and, you know, all the different places you've lived in in the area and how you feel and, you know, where if you would recommend a certain area or, you know, what's uh, what the vibe is like and, and all the different places that Vallarta has to offer. In these 20 years, I imagine you've lived in a lot of places. No, actually, I haven't. I'm <laughs> really? like, no, I'm a creature of comfort. So I still have the original apartment that I rented 20 years ago. Really? Yes. Wow, amazing. Um, it's in an area called Cinco de Diciembre. Yeah. Um, and it was, yeah, I've been in the same place, renting from the same family who's like my Mexican family. And um, actually we still use that apartment um, and we'll get to this to make our jewelry. So our jewelry studio is there. Wow. Um, and yeah, so I have that apartment. When I met my husband, he had a house um, in Nuevo Vallarta area. And so we have made that our family home. So I commute 16 miles, used to take 16 minutes, and now I can take up to an hour, as you know. Yeah, it really can. Um, but yeah, it's 16 minutes, really? Yeah, used to be able to do it just zip in and zip out because there was no traffic lights, there was no traffic. You could I can't just imagine that. You could yeah, because like when it takes me 40 minutes from the Wave of Wire to yeah. area. Yeah. To, to you know romantic zone I'm yeah. like I made it I like know. I've beaten time because it can take up to an hour and a half yeah and sometimes you just sit at one stoplight to get out onto the main highway for 15 minutes because the traffic is so backed up yeah just to get out onto the main highway um so yeah so we live out in uh Nuevo area I have my jewelry studio in Cinco I have my store in Zona Romantica or Old Town um so yeah I mean as far as areas the vibes Old Town has changed. Old Town used to have no tall buildings. Now it's a lot of condos mixed in with like the old, like this uh, building that we're in where my store is. Um, this is an original home, like a Vallarta home. We're just on the bottom floor. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's changed so much, but it's supply and demand. People want to be here. So developers are going to continue to develop. 
course, yeah. You know, like any city. You know, yeah. I, I was born in New York City, and I watched that city grow throughout the nineties, thousands. You know, and the millennium, and it was just, you know, what it was a incredible fun time to be in New York though in the nineties. Yeah, That's really, amazing. really, and you know, and just to see see these cities grow and um, and, and and evolve, and yeah. you know, to be here in Puerto Vallarta at this time. It's similar almost, you yeah. know, and you just, there's so much growth happening and, and so much change. You know? Yeah. I just, and I think COVID and the whole, you know, change that we've had in our world from that has really facilitated that growth. People decided that they weren't happy where they were. They wanted a different kind of lifestyle. They wanted to maybe get off the grid a little bit. They didn't want to be in the rat race rush hour. And so during COVID, people could work remotely. Yeah. And so a lot of people came here. I mean, I could tell you a bazillion stories of people I've met that are still here that yeah. are now raising their children here, have their families here, and have decided to stay in Mexico yeah. because it suits their needs and wants for a lifestyle. Absolutely, absolutely. So speaking of your store, uh, that's where we are right now. Yes. Um, it's a beautiful boutique and Thank cafe. You. It looks like you have just everything here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? You know, how long have you had it? What, uh, what, what do you do? And you know, just uh, this, the whole, the whole, uh, you know, story. Yeah. So, um, I worked just a synopsis of my time in Vallarta. I worked in the hotel industry for five years. I left that. Um, and I went into real estate and I worked in real estate for about three and a half years. I loved that, but my passion was always creating. And so I would work in real estate during the day and I would go home at night and like make jewelry and stuff and just kind of sell it on the side because that filled, not a void, but that, that made me happy. Um, and so I kind of started selling more and more of it. And my family are antique dealers in the U.S. And they, uh, my dad got a box at an auction with an antique silver spoon in it and made me a spoon ring. Whoa. And so all my friends in real estate were like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. I want one. So I called my dad and I was like, hey, could you whip up, like find some spoons and like make five more spoon rings. I want to give them to my friends for their birthdays. And he's like, oh, that's a great idea. So he made these spoon rings and got them down here. And so I gave them to my friends and then I started getting phone calls. Hey, I saw that you made so and so a spoon ring. I was wondering if I could get one too. And so I started to have more demand than I could keep up with and fulfill. So my dad said, why don't you come home and I'll teach you how to make these spoon rings. I'll teach you how I did it. And I said, great. So fly home, I go for about a month and I start doing all this research and I start taking all these vintage spoons and I just, I'm like, I can make earrings and I can make bracelets and spoons. And so we started prototyping all of this stuff. And so my dad helped me fashion these tools. My dad's very creative and helped me fashion these tools. And I had this like this little stock of stuff we made and I packed up my little suitcase and I flew back to Vallarta. And at that time there was a woman um, named Charlotte Semple. Hi Charlotte, I'm gonna send this to her. Um, Charlotte had started this farmer's market for local entrepreneurs and she had a really big vision and it was make it, bake it or grow it. So you had to prove that you made it, baked it, or grew it, and you could come in and sell at this farmer's market. Oh, wow. That farmer's market is now known as the Olas Altas Farmer's Market, or the market in the Tile Park, or the market on Saturdays in Old Town, which is now hugely popular. I think we're going on year 15. I might be wrong on oh, that. Wow, must have really picked up by that. So that's where I got- such an authentic kind of system. Yeah, so that's yeah. where I got my humble little beginning. Um, we've worked really hard over the 15 years to grow. Um, I still have a couple of my original girls that started with me working with me, and then we've added people to the team since. Um, we have our boutique here. This is our second season here. We formerly had a boutique on Basilio Bedillo, which unfortunately got closed uh, due to the pandemic. But then we had an opportunity to come in here with Choco Diva, which are the um, premier chocolatiers here in Vallarta. So they make small uh, micro batch artisan chocolates. Um, we have a coffee shop, beautiful coffee shop. We do like breakfast and lunch, and then we have our boutique. Wow, yeah, you guys have everything here. I mean, some really beautiful jewelry, kids' clothes, you know, just so much. It's, it's you know, I'm excited to look around a little yeah. bit more and, and check it out, too. Yeah. But really, really cool. And I must say, that's amazing that your parents are antique dealers. I used to love watching the Antique Grid show. Oh my gosh, that's like a staple in our family. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I would just watch it for hours on end and just like the history behind things. Uh -huh. It's just such a, it's such an amazing yeah. kind of thing to get involved in. Yeah, you know. Definitely. So, 
So you started, uh, you know, just kind of selling these little, just uh, the jewelry and handmade stuff, and you just kind of grew from there. Yep, we did. Yeah. Every year we'd get a little bigger, grow a little bit more, um, sell at the farm. The farmer's markets are still our bread and butter. We go every Saturday to the old Southwest Farmer's Market. We go every Sunday to the La Cruz Farmer's Market. So you can find us at those two places. Okay. Um, that's from November to May. And then we're in our boutique year round. Okay. We also sell online. So we're busy behind the scenes, even when we don't have farmer's markets going. But those are that's where we get out and meet people. And yeah. that is our passion. And that is what we love. I, I, got, I love the Cruz Farmer Market. I never saw you there, but There's now I'm so going to look for you. There are, yeah. yeah, it's true. You just kind of like yeah. line by. And, for you know, sure. Because you can spend hours and hours getting lost. In yeah, everything. the La Cruz yeah. Farmer's Market, funny enough, started, um, I want to say 14 years ago. And again, I might be a little off on my dates. Um, there was 20 vendors. There was 20 of us in the plaza on a Sunday. And I have like a picture from the original day. Oh my God. And we all just had like an umbrella stuck in a bucket. And we just put our little tables out. And we're like, well, we hope somebody comes to see us <laughs> and now I think oh, we're like 220 wow. vendors yeah. and we probably get anywhere from a thousand to three thousand people on a Sunday that come Amazing. through yeah so if people want to learn more about your shop and you know maybe reach out to you uh, you know I don't know order something or have a question or they want to come visit you uh, what, um, how can they reach you? What's your contact? So, the uh, best way is our website, which is uh, chantelvintagespoonjewelry.com. Um, you can also find us under that handle on all of our social media, so Facebook, Instagram. Um, we are at Akili Serdan 369, which is over in Old Town. But again, if you go to our website, there's walking maps. We'll put it, we'll find, put stuff in the bio. Yeah, you can as find well. all of our information yeah. there. We also sell online via Etsy, which is um, a website oh, nice. that facilitates handmade sales. Yeah. Um, so we have a storefront there, so people can find us there as well. And so we people ship. are in the States or Canada, they can order from yep, your for store. Sure. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we'll make sure to include all that stuff in the bio. Thank you. Um, yeah. So uh, also, you know, I, so we're basically wrapping up, you know, I think we're pretty much, uh, you know, you answered all my questions. Um, but there's some questions that I ask everybody at every interview, and it's okay. always interesting to hear, you know, what people's answers are. So one is, what do you miss the most about back home? My family. That's easy. Everybody always says that. That's too. easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how could you not? Yeah. It's hard. Do you go back and visit, or? I do. Um, I try to go back in the summertime for a month or two which is great. So I get to spend an extended period of time. I probably actually see them more than if I lived closer, you know, because yeah. I get to spend like an extended amount of time. And also people always visit you because of Vallarta. Yeah. Okay? And they come down here for a month in the winter. So oh, nice. yeah. 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 So we literally out of 12 months, we spend three months together. And it's quality time. You it is really quality time. You really appreciate it when you live far away. Absolutely. That's a big, you know, yeah. bonus, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. family. Definitely yeah. family. That's. And what do you miss the least? Gosh, I've been here for so long. I know it's hard. Yeah, it's yeah. hard because it's like my life is here. What do I miss the least? The snow. Yeah, yeah. I grew up cold somewhere. Weather. I grew up somewhere where it snows in the winter. So I, I don't. I don't miss being cold. I don't miss the snow. As soon as it starts to get cold there and like fall hits, I'm back on an airplane here. So. Yeah, yeah. And I think you said I need to take the uh, the summer and the heat any day. Yeah, take the summer <laughs> over the snow for sure. Yeah. 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 And then what is the best thing about Puerto Vallarta? The best thing about Vallarta are the people. Um, you know, the Vallartense, pata salada. Anyone that's born in Vallarta, anyone that's from here, you call them a pata salada or a salty foot. And I just have- Our kids, right? Yeah, our kids are <laughs> pata saladas. Um, I just, the original people from Vallarta, like the stories that I've gotten to hear and know and there's uh, the woman that actually rent my apartment from who's part of like my Vallarta family. She tells me stories all the time in the 50s when she had her five children and they would walk over to the Rio Quale on a Saturday morning. And at that time there was four taxis in Vallarta, four. Wow. So you would walk all your kids and all your laundry and you would start your laundry on a Saturday morning very early and you'd have to get your rock and you would do all your laundry and you do all your sheets first and then you start doing the clothing and then her husband was a fisherman so he would get off work and try to get one of the taxis and he would come and get all the laundry and then she would march the kids back up to the house and you'd have to get home before dark because there was no electricity 
and you'd have to get all the beds made and you'd have to get all it's it's wow. just the old stories of Vallarta yeah. are amazing yeah that's so, and it's, it's got an old dry be dry you know what I mean or yeah, yeah and before they had electricity down by where lay grocery store is there was a generator the size of a train car that would light up the neighborhood when they had enough I don't know if they put gas I don't know if it was gas diesel what it was but that's how they got electricity and the pump would pump water up to their house. Wow. Jeez. And how long yeah. ago was that? That was, um, they bought the lot in 51. So that was like between 1951 and 1955. Wow. That's not even that long ago. Not that you know? long ago. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Viarta's come a really a long ways. ways. Yeah. That's incredible. A long ways. Cool. So yeah, definitely the people. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there's anything you want to add for anybody that might be watching, considering a move to Mexico, thinking about, you know, uh, flirting with the idea, you know, weighing the pros and cons. There's a lot of people that really like to listen to just have an authentic conversation, yeah. not just, you know, something being sold to them or whatever, just to hear, you know, people's lived experience and try to figure out if it's right for them. Is there I anything? would, yeah. yeah, I would say that it's not for everybody. It's for a lot of people, but it's not for everybody. And what I tell people all the time is come and give it a try. Come and take an extended vacation, rent an Airbnb for a month, and see how you feel. Yeah. And if you feel good and you love it, and you feel like it's a thing that would be great for your family, then take the leap and do it. Awesome. You can always go home. Yeah, I agree. And I same thing as you. Like, I knew the second you know I touched the ground, like this is it. Yep. You know. Me too. And, and you just you you can. There's certain things you don't really know until you're there. Exactly. You know? so, totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so thank much for you. joining yeah, us. Thank you. Yeah. So fun to. Uh, Thank you for tuning in uh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet for more videos and interviews with people uh, like Chantel who have moved to Mexico and their stories. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and visit our website at dianimite.com.